Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alex from Fitment Industries, and today we're gonna to be talking to you about how to disassemble and assemble a multi-piece wheel. So we get a lot of questions here in the comments that wanna talk about multi-piece wheels, most notably about how to disassemble and assemble them, and then some common torque specs, some things to consider, how to keep them looking new, especially when you're tearing them apart and putting them back together, and all sorts of things. And we had a ton of comments. We actually had a couple people talk to us about when we were first talking about multi-piece wheels in a previous video, to talk about us, uh, to talk about force equations and all that sort of stuff when we're looking at the hardware. So we wanted to thank you guys for letting us know to talk about it because there's, there's a couple of misconception myths, just a couple of things that are a little bit weird about multi-piece wheels. So we are doing our second episode talking about it. Boom. This is gonna be more of like a candid style video, so we hope you guys enjoyed. And before we get started, I just wanna give a huge shout out to ESR for letting us tear these wheels apart because uh, this, these are brand new wheels. And when we texted David, I was like, hey, thank you so much for the wheels. Can we tear one apart? And they said, sure. So we're gonna break into this one. We're gonna tell you how to disassemble, assemble it, all that sort of good stuff, some tips and tricks on keeping it clean, making sure that they mate properly. Talking to you about a two-piece variant as well. We have some BBS back here that we're gonna take a look at as well, and all that sort of good stuff. But just wanna say thank you out to ESR. If you guys are interested in ESR multi-piece wheels, check out shop at fitmentindustries.com or fitmentindustries.com forward slash quote, sales plug, boom. So today, our patient, our test subject, is the ESR ES3. We're gonna be disassembling this, kind of giving you a couple tips and tricks and then putting it back together. A lot of the tips that we give you today, you can use for two-piece and you can use for three-piece. So just getting started, I mean, it's pretty, pretty fundamentally basic here. You have your inner barrel, you have your outer lip, and then you have your face, which is your design. With a two-piece wheel, you generally have just the actual barrel itself, and then the face will set in either from the front or from the rear. Three-piece, same way gets assembled with the face from the top or from the face from the back. It depends on really what manufacturer, how old the wheel is looking at, all that sort of good stuff. Now, because we are special and we're doing things the lazy way, one thing that you may notice, especially if you're a multi-piece wheel guy, is that these, these do not have any sort of silicone seal or anything like that. We do not have to deal with that today. However, if you're looking to watch this video to learn how to disassemble your multi-piece wheels, this is where you're gonna start. So most of the time you're gonna have a silicone seal right here. Um, and what that does is it keeps the wheel airtight. Both uh, three-piece wheels have it, two-piece wheels would obviously not have it because it's just a barrel, but three-piece wheels are gonna have this. And it's either gonna be silicone seal, which is like 90% of multi-piece wheels, and there are some that are actually welded. Uh, a lot of older work wheels, SSR does it too. So it kind of depends on what you're looking at, but most new wheels are gonna be silicone sealed right here. So before you even get started, just make sure you take a look at that and see um, what you're gonna need to do to take those off. Now, I don't have any silicone seal here. All I have is my hardware, my wrench, all that sort of stuff to take the actual hardware out. But if you do have silicone, you're gonna need like a box cutter or something of the sort. So the first thing that we recommend before you go into the silicone is taking the hardware out. Now we've already done a lot of the work by taking out most of the hardware, which you can see from around here. But the first thing that we recommend is that you take off the hardware from the back. Now with hardware, it can be brittle sometimes, especially with the older stuff. This newer stuff obviously is gonna last a lot longer, but that doesn't mean that it is um, indestructible a lot of times your uh, wrenches and all that sort of stuff that you're using to take these off can actually damage the paint. And if you're spending a lot of money on like titanium coat or different colors or things like that, definitely not something that you wanna cheap out on and try to just rip off the multi-piece wheels, so be careful. We recommend going from the back. Now, a tip that we use is that if you're going to hold anything from the front, that you actually use some sort of like uh, glasses cleaner, or this is a laptop, like, top case that I use. And what you can do is you can actually kind of use it as a buffer between the metal and the metal so that when you go to slide it on, you don't have the metal on metal friction that's happening there that can sometimes cause paint to chip, which is pretty cool. And then you can take from the other side and start disassembling your actual hardware. Now, I already loosened all of this stuff up, which is pretty convenient. And of course, I look like a darn fool trying to get it in here, but you pretty much just take it apart from the back and you can hold on to it with the front and then take it off by hand and just be careful when you're doing that. And then you can slide it from the front and there you go, you have another one off. So usually we just recommend that you're careful Make sure that your wheel doesn't fall off your table. That's usually a plus as well. And then I always re-put it back together so I don't lose anything. Now, if you're looking to treat your hardware or clean it up or anything like that, 
You can set that stuff in whatever cleaner that you're using. If you're looking to paint them or just throw them away, you can do that as well. It's completely up to you. But hardware has gotten more expensive lately, so I probably wouldn't recommend throwing it away. So we're gonna take all the hardware off, we're gonna speed this up, and then we're gonna go on to the next step. Next. Some of these are a little bit tighter than others sometimes. We'll talk about that in a moment. So now that we have the last one out, I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna do this last one by hand here. Now I put it here because it's the faces on the front. So that means that every multi-piece wheel is a little bit different. Some will mount from the back, some will mount from the front. Some will mount in the middle if it's a sandwich mount. It's completely unique to the wheel. A lot of new wheels are gonna come like this though. It's just kind of like the standard. So we're going to pull this out. And the important thing is to obviously be really careful. So then obviously you have your face, which is awesome, it's actually not too heavy. It's not too bad. Don't drop it, that's the most important bit. So we're gonna set that over here. And then obviously you would have your lip. So here's your lip, which is actually extremely lightweight. It's not too bad at all. We recommend being careful as always. And then I'm gonna move this stuff over here. And then you have your barrel. And there you go. And that's how you get your three pieces. So a couple things to note with your hardware is obviously first and foremost, be careful because you can strip the paint super easy. A lot of, uh, a second really big thing that people kind of mess up is the torque spec. Um, but we'll get into that in just a minute. The biggest thing here is that if you have silicone and you're going to tear apart your wheels and you're going to tear it apart, you notice that your silicone is kind of being a finicky guy. Take out your hardware first. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take a silicone, uh, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the actual barrel itself. So I'm going to imitate that. If you are looking right here and you want to take the lip off first and your silicone seal is right here, you're gonna actually wanna cut using your box cutter right along the line here to essentially break the pressure off from the outer lip. What that's gonna allow you to do is once you cut through that entire thing, you can take a rubber mallet or take something that's nice and easy or just maybe use some force from, from your good old fashioned muscles that I have a lot of, and you can actually force this off. And that's gonna break the outer lip off. Usually what we recommend is a rubber mallet just to be safe on the paint. You might have to hit in a couple different areas. And then the same time, once you break that off, you're going to have your inner barrel, which is right here. And this is gonna be all gooped up. The important thing is, is after you disassemble that, that you clean all of it down. So take off all the silicone, take off everything, take off any sort of, um, you know, any sort of silicone that may have seeped into the actual, I would say, what do they call it? Pairing or match. Where these two pieces are gonna meet, there's a fancy word for it, I'll remember it in 30 seconds, that you're gonna to wanna to make sure is absolutely clean. In fact, a lot of times what people would recommend is that you can actually sand this down with a super fine grit to keep it nice and clean. Then you use a cleaner on it, then you let it dry completely because you wanna make sure that there's absolutely nothing that's in the way to prevent the mating, that's what I was looking for, the mating surface to actually you know, have any sort of issue with air leaking or anything like that. So all apart, it's actually not too heavy, it's actually pretty cool. So then the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to take and consider is that if you're buying used, it's a pretty common thing. Um, with, I'm completely not even on camera right now, which is completely fine, but what you're gonna to wanna to take note of is used wheels are not gonna come apart as nice and as clean and as simple as those did because, well, the wheels we got were brand new. So this is Corey's, these are his two-piece wheels. So I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit of what this looks like. This is obviously two-piece. Did he even tighten these up for me or loosen these up for me? He did. And we're looking at style fives. Let me make sure. Oh, no, see, these mount from the back. So we're gonna flip this the other way. And my hands are getting all dirty now. This is awesome. So then these are the style fives and I'm gonna pull these out if they, if he lets me. Just give me a. So, um, yeah, we had to foot stomp those ones in. So You're kidding. Made, no, so I can foot stomp it for you. 
We're gonna be right back with a little bit of physical calibration. <laughs> So in case you didn't put two and two together, the older wheels are gonna have a tougher time coming apart, so sometimes you have to curb stomp the faces. Now, professionally, we do not recommend that. However, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, and I don't really care what you do in your garage, it's completely up to you. Here's your two-piece. Uh, two you have your barrel, you have your face. Looks like it's been through a little bit. And then this one was actually rear-mounted, so this you actually would put in from the barrel into the lip. So, just something to consider. When you have these apart, the first and most important thing is, is clean your hardware, clean your wheels, clean everything about these things, because when they're apart, this is the best time to make everything look as brand new as possible. And I'm talking about everything. So I'm talking about where your mating surface is for your hardware, where your inner barrel and outer barrel meet. You know, if you have polished barrels, cleaning those up, if you have anything like that, you know, now's the time to do it. I see so many people that will rebarrel or they get new wheels or they tear them apart and they put them back together and then they don't clean them or they don't take care of them when they're putting them back together they use their dirty hands they don't use a cloth they don't use anything to kind of keep the scratches away from the barrel then they put these brand new polished barrels on and it looks like they've been through hell don't do that just do it the right way the first time so just something to consider here when you're looking at used wheels versus new wheels now i'm going to set these back down because i don't want to end up having to curb stomp them again, but just now you have an idea of what they look like. So like we said before, before you go back into installing everything, you wanna make sure that your mating surface is as clean as possible. I'm talking about where your inner barrel and your outer lip are gonna meet. I'm talking about anything that's gonna to have to do with actually tightening these bad boys down. Uh, you can use a silicone cleaner, you can use a scuff pad, you can use a lot of different stuff. Usually the way that I see it, the finer the clean, uh, the finer the sanding, the better. Just make sure you're getting everything off there. Use a cleaner as well. The more careful, the more prep that you put into these, the better the wheels are gonna handle over time. You're not gonna have to deal with leaks and all that sort of stuff. My recommendation is guys, if you're gonna do something, if you're gonna do something, just do it right the first time. With multi-piece wheels, there's a lot of opportunities for you to mess up, whether that's with the seal, whether that's with your torque spec, whether that's with just installing them incorrectly or just not doing it the right way. It's important that you guys understand that this can ultimately do a lot of damage to your car if you mess it up or if you just don't care and then you're wondering why you're replacing barrels or you're replacing tires all the time because you just screwed it up. So let's get into reassembly. So once you have your mating surfaces cleaned, it actually is pretty darn easy. Now the first and most important thing that we actually got schooled on is something called your actual coefficient friction. I think it's a coefficient of Clamping force equation. Now, we kind of got schooled on this, which is pretty cool, but what ends up happening is something that you have to remember is that depending on the size hardware that you have, if it's an M8, I believe it's 18 foot-pounds of torque. If you have a smaller M6 hardware, it's around 15 foot-pounds of torque, but because of how many pieces you're putting down at that 15 or 18 foot pounds of torque, it's equivalent to like nine to 15,000 pounds of pressure that keep the inner barrel or the outer barrel and the inner lip conjoined and made it together securely. And then obviously you have the face, which holds a lot of rigidity in the center of the wheel and a lot of your rotational mass and all that stuff goes through there, but it's actually cool. So these little guys uh, do a lot and actually keeping the wheel together is pretty cool. The silicone seal only keeps it airtight. So we just wanted to thank what's his name, Euro Garage for actually schooling us a little bit on that. It was actually very, very cool to read. So just something to consider. I know a lot of times when you see stuff like this, you're like, how can this, you know, hold a wheel together? And well, math, that's just how it works. So once you decide that you want to put everything together, you got everything clean, you got everything organized. Usually we recommend that you just set everything back up to where you want it. So I am going to switch these around. And ideally, like I said before, I would recommend either if you have you know, some sort of microfiber, if you put a damp microfiber down, or if you just have a very clean surface so you don't have to worry about scuffing, I actually wouldn't even recommend dragging anything. I would just set it down like this, and then you're gonna set down your lip, like so. You're gonna wanna align your holes, and then you can take your face. And you can do the same thing. Now, of course, just like before, usually what I would recommend, honestly, I would recommend using gloves. You don't have to. I know that's just me being finicky, but if you guys are spending a lot of money on wheels, I recommend being careful. And obviously be very careful when you're putting it around the outer lip, because you can scratch it if you are not careful. Okay. 
and then you just be nice and soft. And there you go, you're done. Just kidding. Then you have to go through the wonderful world of putting all of these back in. Now usually what I recommend is that you put them in, you put a couple in hand tight, but you always go in a star formation first and then you clamp down after. Now there are other people that tell you to clamp down to 18 right away. There's people that tell you to not clamp down at all. There's people that tell you to use, to put them all in, silicone seal, then torque to spec. Honestly, the most important thing is just making sure that you're torquing down to spec at some point in the time and going in a star formation. I wouldn't recommend just going in a circle because you're gonna have unequal pressure on the face and that's gonna cause issues with overall just integrity of the wheel. Do a star, do it right. Now whether you wanna wait till before or after the silicone seal is personal preference we would recommend that you torque after you've done the star formation and you've got all the stuff in there just because a lot of times with how many pieces of hardware they have to put in a multi-piece wheel people have a tendency to forget to torque the stuff down after they've sealed or maybe they say they'll do it later and they never do it then they run into issues another thing that I've seen out there is people talking about thread locker and things like that and here's where we've kind of come to if you want to use thread locker uh, on your hardware can you? The answer would be yes. Should you? When installed properly, the answer would probably be no. Um, a lot of the multi-piece wheels really don't need thread locker. If you apply them correctly, you apply the torque correctly, you do it all right, you shouldn't need to use thread locker. Um, some people still do just to be safe, in which case we would recommend the Loctite 232. It's the blue, I believe, and that's going to allow you to just have that little extra sense of security. However, if you plan on taking this back apart in the future, you're gonna to wanna to buy yourself a six pack because it's gonna be a pain to take apart. It's an absolute mess. You have way more to clean up. Usually we recommend that you don't do that. The one thing that we definitely wouldn't recommend is if you put Loctite around your barrel and your lip because that is going to be a catastrophic mess. And the only time I think I've seen people do that is when they've decided to sell the wheels and they don't wanna tell anybody that the wheel leaks. So don't do that. Keep the Loctite out of the equation. My recommendation is if you absolutely have to, 232, but otherwise, just keep it, you know, your hardware. That's what keeps everything together and you shouldn't need to do anything above that. If you do, you might wanna consider the integrity of your wheel and make sure that it's actually safe to drive on. So then we're gonna put these back in. All right, so then once you have decided to bash your fingers in and they're practically bleeding and it sucks and you ask why you're, well, yeah, yeah, you ask yourself why you decided to buy multi-piece wheels, then you ask why you wanted to tear them apart and put them back together, then you go back and forth and you do all the mess that is a multi-piece wheel, even though everybody makes it sound like it's super simple, it's still kind of a pain in the butt. You're gonna want to actually re-scuff this silicone area and then clean it off again. Just making sure again you have a clean surface that you're putting the silicone seal on. Usually what people do is they will actually take some painter's tape and they put a, a line of painter's tape on this side, a line of painter's tape on this side so that they have a nice line that they can use for their silicone seal. We recommend non-acid curing sort of silicone seal so that's just gonna help with maintaining the actual seal over a long period of time plus it's not going to eat into anything it's pretty nice stuff you can put it pretty much anywhere and once you have your painters tape you can then take that silicone and you can actually place it all the way down and you want a nice uniform bead line something that's just going to look nice and simple nothing too crazy don't get crazy with the silicone i see a lot of people go nuts with it nice and simple then you can kind of dip your hand in some water soapy water bunch of different tricks so it doesn't get stuck to your fingers and you just take your finger and just like the old guy from RWB you're just going to take your finger and you're going to run it down the silicone bead and what that's going to do is it's going to uniform out the silicone bead so it doesn't look like it's higher in one area lower in another area it's going to uniformly sit the silicone seal into the mating area so it's nice and simple sometimes people will do it 24 hours on if you need to or not most of the times I've seen people only needing to do it once but some people do it twice it's completely fine just remember that if you're putting a second silicone seal on our recommendation is still to clean the silicone because sometimes dust can get in there if you're in a garage or something like that you put the second bead on it can not do anything and then you have to deal with the second coat of silicone so just be careful with that but once you have that on let that cure give that time to do that and you're all set to go so we recommend that you torque it down correctly now one of the biggest things that we see is people either hand tightening them or they decide to use a really crummy uh, torque bar or something like that and I wouldn't recommend that you do that. I also wouldn't recommend that you use one of these. However, we do recommend that you use an 
accurate torque bar that when you're actually torquing these bad boys down that you're doing it correctly. 18 foot pounds of torque or 15 foot pounds of torque depending on the size of your hardware, M8 or M6. Um, you can rewatch it, make sure that you understand which type of hardware that you have, make sure it's done correctly. Star pattern is what we recommend. So by star pattern, you literally go like you're forming a star all the way around and you just keep going until you've hit all of your hardware. So that is what you would need to know when disassembling or assembling a wheel. This is the ESR ES3 if you guys are interested in the ESR multi-piece wheel lineup or just wheels in general, whether it's multi-piece or not. Hit us up over at wheels at fitmanindustries.com or you can just submit a quote form at fitmanindustries.com. We also have other wheels out there like Volk, Rays, Gram Lights. You know, we have the cool stuff. We have other stuff. We have all sorts of wheels and tires, like 30,000 different things, if that's your thing. But be sure to subscribe and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next or if you thought we missed something. But I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much, guys, for dropping a comment, having us talk about this. We love making these videos for you. But I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We will see you later. Peace.